Welcome everybody to Spirituality Adventures. This is a non-judgmental place to explore spirituality, and we're so glad you're here. This is a viewer and listener supported podcast, so we greatly appreciate your support. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Be sure and like, share, and subscribe to any of the social media content platforms that you're using. And then if you go to our website, spiritualityadventures.com, you can make a one-time donation or with a monthly subscription, you'll gain access to our bonus content. We greatly appreciate it. Thank you for tuning in. All right. Welcome everybody to Spirituality Adventures. Thanks for tuning in to this episode. And um, I am so thankful Shelly Paget is joining us again. Uh, we released an interview with her back on May of 24. And I'd encourage you to go back if you missed that one and re-listen to that. It, we talked about Shelly's story, her background, and has a fascinating spiritual journey and has led her into uh, her current work. Her her husband is Doug Paget, who works with Vote Common Good. And I did an interview with him back several months ago. And then um, and then I loved the work that Shelly's doing and yoga and meditation and how she's taken that to people in her community. So thanks Shelly again for, for joining us. Um, before we, we jump into, uh, we're going to, we're actually going to do some uh, practices on this podcast where we're going to actually talk through uh, some, some guided movement meditation and, uh, and practice this together, but we'll set it up for you. Shelly will do that. But before I do that, I wanted to just say for my regular listening audience, thanks so much for uh, supporting Spirituality Adventures. If you haven't supported Spirituality Adventures, I'd encourage you to go to our website, spiritualityadventures.com, and join our support team, and you'll get extra bonus content. And whether you're a part of that team or not, I want to invite you to an event coming up. I am going to be joining several podcasters and bloggers in Springfield, Missouri, of all places. This is a conservative Bible Belt bastion, right? Springfield, Missouri, very close to Branson, Missouri, and all this kind of stuff. But uh, Trip Fuller, who runs uh, Christian, or what is it, Homebrewed Christianity. It's one of the larger podcasts in America for sort of a progressive Christian crowd. Um, he's going to be doing theology beer camp, theology beer camp. Now, all of you, most of you know that I'm in recovery, <laughs> so I'm going to be doing the NA beer camp, but, uh, you know, I'll do ginger beer, but anyway, but no, this will be fun. I know Tripp's got there and he's already scoped out all of the, uh, all of the places where there's uh home brewed beers and he's checked them out already. We are having at least 20 theologians, 20 podcasters, and then I think Derek Webb from Cadman's Call is going to be a musician that's there. I think Trey Pearson from, what's that group, Everyday Sunday or something? What's that called, Matt? The every uh, Trey Pearson's group. Everyday Sunday. And then also, um, is it Dan Hasseltine from Jars of Clay? I think those, those three people for sure are going to be there providing music. It's October the 19th through the 21st, I'd love for you to come join me and you can get $25 off your tickets using the code spirituality God pod, go to my website, spiritualityadventures.com, And you can go, you can click the ticket button. You can use the uh, code that's right there and come join us, hang out. It's a, it's a blast as trip likes to say, this will be Theology that's not boring and theology that does not suck. So <laughs> if you've ever thought that theology was boring, I promise you this won't be boring. It, it'll be uh, it'll be fun and it's good theology. So anyway. All right, Shelly, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Thanks. Super nice to be back. Thanks for asking me. And you are in uh in the Minneapolis area, correct? Minneapolis. It's a beautiful sunny day outside. Um, it's about 80 degrees, my favorite. So we've had the most glorious summer for me. It's been hot for other people, but the best tomato growing season yet. Excellent. Yes. Very cool. Um, so we talked 
quite a bit about meditation last time. And uh, for for people who are listening, maybe for the first time or regular listeners, um, you know, I got into meditation when I was in rehab for a Xanax alcohol problem. And I was exposed to DBT therapy, dialectical behavioral therapy, and they have a mindful meditation component in it. And I have, I've always had anxiety since I was a little kid. I, and that's what caused my insomnia. And so there's lots of things that, that trigger my anxiety, but pastoring, <laughs> pastoring people, I compare, you know. yeah, I compare it to like parenting, you know, so if something goes wrong with your kid and how it just, you know, can trigger that anxiety. Well, I, that happened to me as a pastor all the time, there'd be conflict or crisis or people problems or this or that. And I just, my brain never shut down. And I, I only slept about three hours a night and I didn't do alcohol or drugs, but I finally, that lack of sleep caught up to me when I was in my late fifties and I started trying to help you know, and that's what got me on the Xanax prescription. And then all of a sudden I started adding alcohol in because the Xanax kind of started wearing off and that caused my whole meltdown. And now I'm in rehab and I, I go, Oh, I think this meditation thing would be good for me. Uh, it'd be good for probably my overactive amygdala and my, <laughs> my anxiety and my sleeplessness and all these kind of things. So I got home and found a DBT therapist here in Kansas City, Amy Tibbetts, who founded Lilac Center. It's the largest uh, DBT therapist in Kansas City area. Hooked up with her and then found a meditation teacher, been a part of that group for two and a half years. And now I'm actually doing a two-year training for teacher certification with Tara Brock and Jack Cornfield in mindfulness meditation. And I've loved it. And it's such good, there's great teaching, there's great practice and uh and so so and i'm on several different groups through the week so that's what got me into it what remind everybody what you got into it for those who didn't who maybe heard you or maybe didn't hear you what are what are some of the top benefits that you've found and why you've pressed into this for yourself and why you have developed a yoga meditation um what do you call yours again you have a name you've started on, uh, Oh, um, so yoga sanctuary, yoga sanctuary is the nonprofit studio in South Minneapolis. And then I also, so that's a nonprofit. And then I co-created a yoga teacher training program, um, with another woman and that's called holistic yoga teacher training and personal transformation. Yeah. So give us some of your top reasons. What drew you into this? And why do you continue to pursue it and, and actually share it and with other people and teach other people? Yeah, um, that's a really big question. And I'll just try to yeah. um, get a small answer. Um, so for me, yoga is now a way of life. And there's so many different genres of yoga. There's different styles of yoga. And the kind of yoga that I'm um, practicing on my own and that I'm teaching um, is called holistic yoga. And I just made that name up. Um, we're in the lineage of, um, therapeutic yoga, but I'm not a, a trained yoga therapist, which is another thousand hours on top of the, um, 500 hours of training that I've already had. Well, I've had a lot more than that, but like, you know, official. Um, and so I haven't gone that down that route because I have everything I need to make this really practical for people. So I think for me, as somebody who's leaned in toward holistic healing and natural healing for a long time, um, and also had this dichotomy of um, evangelicalism, and that those two didn't necessarily go well together, they didn't, they didn't play well together, according to the evangelical rules. Um, so now that, you know, I started being much more progressive in my theology, and so yoga to me is like a perfect partner for all of life and that it it's perfect for whatever faith you practice uh, because it's not a faith it's rooted obviously in hinduism buddhism um, but it's not that and so it goes really well with any faith practice because it is a spiritual practice it's a very deeply spiritual practice if you so choose you can go to um, like a gym, you know, workout type yoga that works for a lot of people, especially when folks are younger, it's like kind of getting in into it and they at least feel the breath. 
Um, and for me, it's way more than that. It's a whole body, mind, spirit connection. And what keeps me in it is um, the real practical benefits of it. So it's not only physical movement, but it is such a spiritually rooting practice um, that I can't help but share it um, because it helps ground me. It helps stabilize me. And then it also keeps expanding me and growing. Like you've done a lot of growing in your life and you just shared a few things that you've actually done. So when we're willing to step into those situations with an open mind, open heart and see what happens without fear being the guiding um, rule or the guiding light and that we let love um, be the guiding light. And that's what I really think is at the roots of yoga is, is love and it's acceptance. And then if you get really deep into the theology, it actually goes a little bit haywire. If you get fundamental, like anything else, fundamental, there's very specific ways of doing this and of doing that. And if you don't do that, then, you know, you become moralistic and stuff, but that's not usually the through line for the kind of yoga that I'm um, teaching or practicing. It's very practical. Um, it's just helpful for people to live their lives well. Hmm. And you've, you've also taught this to children, right? Mm -hmm. But talk I, about, I'm kind of curious about that a little, what, what, how does it benefit children? Oh, so <laughs> much. It's um, I just finished at the end of July, a kid's camp in our yard here. And it's a week long every afternoon from one to four. And we take six year olds to 12 year olds and the whole week is themed and it's based on the principles, the roots and the foundations of yoga um, philosophy. And for those three hours, um, we do everything like on the first day, it's all about your light. And we actually have them paint a t-shirt with this kind of logo on it, reminding them that the light is within them and that they honor that light and then see that light in other people. So think about all of the um, developmental things that you can teach a child when you're seeing them that way and inviting them to see themselves and then let that be reflected toward other people. Amazing. Mm. And all the activities go around that. The second day we talk about shadows and our shadowy side. And again, softening any moralistic um, tendencies around that or judgments around that. And just like accepting, I think we talked about this last time that, you know, I have a shadow of perfectionism. I don't like it, but if I pretend it's not there, I don't address it or I'm unwilling to see it, then I'm going to hide it. Yeah. And secrets are the language of shame. And as you and I know, shame doesn't get us anywhere and it doesn't do anything for kids. So mm -hmm. we do the whole next day on shadows mm -hmm. and talking about how this is, you know, also in our nature, but then we move into how do we deal with those shadowy, harder feelings? And we get really into emotions on the third day and read books along with each one of these things. We teach them breath practices and movement and cooperative games. So they're hearing their voices. It's phenomenal. That's it's awesome. so important because if every kid, and then we invite the parents in on the last day and they're with us for about 15 minutes. And I have the kids teach them what, when we're feeling angry, what's a breath practice we can do. So I just, you know, narrow it in. So then the parents actually are the people who are going to keep this going with their kids. And it's just as important for the parents to learn as the kids. So there's a newsletter and all the things because we can do more for to support our mental and emotional, relational, spiritual health. And oftentimes people don't have the tools, including you and I, and we revert toward um, the reaction mm -hmm. or the um, we default to what's known rather than opening to what's lesser known and harder work you know, to change the patterns is where the work is. And this gives us the support to actually change patterns. Hmm. It's really phenomenal. It's cool. Yeah. So I, I was going to say, after I did the interview with you and heard how you started, you know, this years ago, um, I'm at this new church, Living Water Christian Church in Kansas, in Parkville, Missouri. Uh, and so I thought, well, heck, I'm going to try so I, I just posted on my Facebook, I recruited a yoga teacher and, and then some of my mindful meditation people. And I said, and I just advertised six week intro to yoga and meditation. We did it at the church and, um, and we, it's trauma informed and 
for beginners. We made it made it free to the public, but they could give a donation. And um, we had uh, in the six weeks, I think the biggest night we had 25 people, like the whole place was filled with yoga mats because it's not a huge room. And then we had, I think we had over 30 people participate in it. And so we're starting another one, September 6th, for those of you who are in Kansas City, um, and we're going to do start another one. And I think we're going to include, uh, I think I've got somebody who's going to, at the same time we're doing working with the adults, we're going to have a, a, uh, a thing for children for Brad, you're going to make me cry. I, yeah. So, I mean, this is all wow. because of your inspiration and well, I'm not even saying really that, like, I'm just saying the benefit that this can bring to people to opening their hearts and minds, um, and to helping with like disseminate some of the information just enough so that it's accessible and that they can take it home. And really it's a felt difference in our lives. And mm -hmm. I've seen that over and over again through teacher training, or I had a student in my class on Saturday who comes in with um, his service dog. He has extreme anxiety, takes um, ketamine treatments weekly or biweekly, like really severe anxiety and at the end of class, he's been coming faithfully for about eight months. He just said, you know, that was so emotional for me, something released. And it's by no means every time. Mm -hmm. And it's not about me, but it is that I said, you know, a lot happens when you practice with someone and the same people in the same space. And you know, as a Christian, the power of your breath or spirit and what happens in those places where you really do feel safe, um, safe and seen and supported there's a lot that, of healing that really can happen. So I'm, I'm so excited for you and the people that might make their way to you. Yeah. Well, if you're in Kansas city, uh, we'll start Wednesday night, September 6th at six 30. And I think stay tuned. Cause I think we'll have a, a children's component to, to correspond with the adults as well. So, yeah, well, let's, uh, let's talk about, um, this practice. So those of you who are listening, you know, you're showering or you're driving or you're doing your chores or however you listen to podcasts or some of you, I know, watch on YouTube as well, but we're going to, Shelly's going to lead us through some actual guided, uh, movement meditation practice. So, so you can listen through this, but if you're, if you want to come back to it at some point in you know, down the line, I would encourage you to even come back to it again and work through this. You know, you can use the same guided meditation many times and get, you know, and it benefits you over and over again. So I would encourage you to, to remember this and then come back to it again when you're in a, maybe in a quiet space where you can really press into this. So, but yeah, let's, where, where do you want to take us now, Shelly? Well, um, just a thought to tag onto that, it might be possible for folks to just note where this starts. So if this happens to work for them or they want to come back to it, you know, just note the time timestamp um, and or we could pull out this section and just make it an audio clip so people could still do it or something um, so they could come back to the practice, knowing that there are a whole, whole, whole slew of practices online um, that they could join. But sometimes it's like if you connect with someone and then we also have a bunch on our yoga sanctuary um, website. We have an on-demand library that is only $19 a month and people can access this holistic yoga um, anytime they want to with all of our teachers at Yoga Sanctuary. So it's a really inexpensive way. And I think that we are doing something a little bit differently. Um, it's all trauma-informed and yeah, halt, like chair yoga to, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, it's that website again. Real it's yoga sanctuary mpls.com okay mpls is in Min minneapolis okay. okay and uh um, and so they can so they can get audio or video uh practice it's all, yeah it's all there it's a, ton, it's a ton of practices okay cool um, so for our time here just as an introduction for folks and some things that i love to do was i thought that i would in all of this is an invitation so nobody is forcing you to do anything. Um, it's just like a check-in with your body. And so we start with the physical body. We want to move that because this is our um, most gross or dense part of ourselves. And quite honestly, 
Um, we move through our day kind of mindlessly and routinely a lot. And so to have some intention around that movement, we invite the breath in with the movement. And so that's where you might get something like mindful movement. It will be very gentle movement, but it is in my estimation. And I think in a lot of meditation um, practices, people are moving their body and their breath prior to actually sitting down for a seated meditation, because like you, um, uh, testified to is maybe not the right word, but, um, our minds are really busy. And so if we connect with our breath and our bodies before we are sitting down in our bodies, then we're more able to tune into, um, the breath or stillness. And so first we'll move for about five to eight minutes. Then we'll um, sit down. And when we sit down, we're going to do a couple of breath practices. One of them will just be a deep um, breathing practice where we'll invite the breath down deep. And that's for anxiety and for settling and calming. Um, and then a second one is going to be called Nadi Shodana or alternate nostril breathing. And I just want to show the hand position so that when we're doing it, you know, people are familiar. So we'll, with the left hand, we'll take, this is called a mudra. So if you remember Jesus blessing people, didn't he have his, yeah, his, this is called prana mudra. So prana means, you know, like your life force. So we're taking that thumbs on the pinky finger and the ring fingers, left hand on your lap, right hand will come up first uh, pinky or first two fingers between the brows. And then we'll use the right ring finger and thumb to alternately close above the flare of the nostril. Have you done this breath practice before, no, Fred? I've not. <laughs> Oh, it's so wonderful. I'm glad that you're going to learn this. Okay. Um, and then I'll tell people as we're doing this, like I'll guide it all the way through, but it'll feel more comfortable if we talk about it right now. So people know where we're going. Okay. Um, this breath practice is for balancing and evening out. We call them channels in the body, right side, left side, tapping into the center line, um, the channel. And it just helps to literally science wise, balance out right and left sides of the brain, right and left sides of the body. And we talked last time about chakras or these energy centers up the spine. It said that at the base of the spine, there's an energy in that um, when we breathe in, especially with this, like a double helix, they crisscross through the energy centers. And then we're pausing and holding awareness at that third eye. You can also do this with the hands down. So if the neck ever gets sore, I'll guide it mentally as well, which is more accessible for some people. Um, so we'll do those two breath practices and then we'll, we'll sit and I'll do a little bit of guided relaxation and I'll guide people toward their third eye or toward their breath and then let them settle in. And I'll be still and silent for part of that, but not too long because that gets uncomfortable for people. And they're like, where am I going? And then we'll come out of it really gently. So all of that, that I just described, will take about 25 ish minutes. Um, so you don't have to do all those components and maybe it'll be 20, but, um, it takes a little while to unwind before we actually can settle. How's that sound? It's good. And I'm going to, I'm going to do it right with you. So for those of you who are watching, that's great. You can, but also the, just those who are listening to just know I'm participating as Shelly leads us through this. Okay. So if you're with us or you want to be with us, I'm going to invite you to, let's just stand up first since we've been sitting and chatting for a while and don't mind me as I need to change my camera angle. Yep, I'll change a little too. Okay, so I think I'm in that screen and my head's not cut off. Let's see here. So can you hear my volume okay? I can hear your volume fine, yep. Okay. So I'm just in my living room and I'll just invite you to just walk for a moment and maybe move your arms, move your legs. And as you do this, just sense the swinging of the arms, uh, the lifting of the feet and the movement of the knees, and then just let it be easy. Shake out your head. There's absolutely nothing that you could do here that's right or wrong. Take any other movement that feels right for you and just settle in. Let your eyes maybe shift side to side, maybe your head move so Rather than marching like this, like you're on an intense walk, we're just moving. Everything's easy. Let the arms swing and take another breath here. Nice. When you feel ready, let the feet pause. 
and take a moment to look down at your feet. We want the feet so that they're parallel and the toes pointing forward. In a moment to lift your toes up off the floor. So flare your toes out, spread them out. If you have shoes on, that's gonna be harder, but just try to lift your toes and spread them out. And then shrug your shoulders, keep the toes lifted, take a big inhale. And then as you exhale, roll the shoulders back and down and slowly set your toes back on the floor, keep them spread. And your eyes might close, your eyes might be open. And then take a moment in the standing shape. This is called mountain pose. You might roll the shoulders back and turn your palms forward. Yeah, and just push into your feet. I would invite you to soften the eyes, gaze downward or close your eyes. And just notice the body for a moment in the shape. And if you feel uncomfortable in any of these shapes, just remind yourself that you're safe and that there's no expectation. And we're simply tuning into sensation. So maybe sense the feet on the floor. Now micro bend in the knees. And as you push your feet into the floor, the law of physics, you might get a reverb up the whole body and the crown of your head might lift a little bit taller. And take one more breath here. Palms forward, chest open, breathing in from your feet to your crown. And breathing out from the crown or top of your head down the whole body to your feet. And we'll cycle the breath one more time. Breathe in from feet to crown up the front of the body, pause at the top. And breathing out down the back of the body. And just for a moment, let the hands soften toward your thighs but stay really present to the body in this very erect, um, standing at attention shape. Nice, and then breathe in, bend your knees, shrug your shoulders, and breathe out, just shake out your hands, wiggle your hips a little bit. Nice, especially if you're from that conservative hip kind of like, we don't move our hips around, so move your hips a little bit. And then find another comfortable position with your feet. We're just gonna move our arms side to side. So as you push into your feet, breathe in, float your arms out to the side so they're about shoulder height. And as you breathe out, slowly float the fingertips down toward your thighs. I'm going to count the breath momentarily, but push through the feet, lift the arms, palms may face down and reach through your fingertips. And then as you exhale, lower the arms. Now you know where we're going, so you might close your eyes. Breathe in, arms rise for four, three, two, one, lowering, four, three, two, one. Three more, breathe in, arms wide, four, three, two, one, lower, four, three, two, one. On your own, two more. Feel the inhale, lift the arms like they're floating, like bird wings on the breath and feel the exhale lowering the arms down. Try not to rush the breath. And when you close your eyes, you take out any sense of competition, sense of needing to look a certain way, breathe a certain way, and you tap into your own breath. Do that one more time, easy in the eyes, float the arms. And your exhale lowers. And then pause here, find that mountain pose, breathe in. And as you breathe out, notice the hands, notice the fingertips, notice any tingling that may have come alive. This is your prana, this is your breath and your life force. What is alive within you and what are you alive within? And then blink your eyes open if they're closed. We'll widen the feet a little bit more and then we'll stay with the arms. Keeping your left hand down, breathe and lift your right arm up and overhead. As you breathe out, lean left, hold the hand, the left hand on your leg as you reach the right arm overhead. And then breathe in, we'll switch arms. Or you could do the left. I wasn't sure if I should um, do opposite. If I was teaching in the studio, I'd be mirroring you. So switching your arms as you breathe in either side, one hand down to your thigh, the other hand in the sky, and breathe out, lean to your side, look down at that side. We're gonna keep going. Inhale, switch your arms. 
and exhale, lean. Tap into your breath, breathe into switch. And breathe out, lean. Last one, inhale, switch. And exhale, lean. Nice, breathe in, both arms lift up and overhead. And breathe out, hands to heart center. One more like that. This is a sun breath. Inhale, arms wide and up. When you're feeling depressed or low energy, exhale, hands to heart center. This is bringing the light in. We'll do that one more time. Inhale, great breath to do in the morning. Arms wide and up. And exhale, hands to heart. Take a breath here. Thumbs at your heart center. Big breath in. Exhale, let it go. Nice, and we're gonna do one more thing standing. So bring your feet just a little bit closer together and imagine, so this is good for as we age. So imagine that you had a chair behind you and you were gonna sit back in the chair. So let the hand slide down your legs just a little bit. And then your butt's popping back just a little bit so you have a bit of a Z shape in your body, shake out your head. And then find one spot in front of you and as you breathe in, lift your right arm forward, just parallel with your shoulder. As you breathe out, lower the right hand down. We're going to deepen the breath. Inhale, left arm reaching forward. As you exhale, lower the left hand down. One more time, each side. Breathe in, right arm lifts. And breathe out, lower. Last one. Inhale, left. And exhale, lower. Can you feel your legs? Breathe in, both hands forward. Nice, and exhale, stay here. Set your eyes right between your hands. Feel yourself breathing two more cycles of breath and find ease in your eyes. Know how important it is to bring effort, intention into our lives. And then as we inhale, bring your hands to your hips. Yep, push your butt back and then let your chest fall forward into a forward fold. In a forward fold, the knees are bent and drop your head down. Let go of the idea that your legs are supposed to be straight in a forward fold. We're stretching out that low back. You want to nod your head yes. Honor your yeses in your life. Shake your head no. Honor your no's. And this is the only safe direction to circle the head. Just rotate your head really big. Take one more inhale. And as you exhale, sigh out your mouth, let it go, dangle down. <sighs> Put your hands back on your knees. Lower the hips, we'll tuck your chin and slowly rise back up. And when you get to the top, shrug your shoulders. With your hands on your hips, we're gonna just do one last thing here and then we're gonna come down to sit. So push the hips forward. This is gonna be a little back bend and then push your hips back and just feel this movement in the low back and the hips. Really, really good for the back. And then do the same thing, but go side to side and make sure you're bending in your knees and that you're feeling this big pelvic bone move side to side, it gets locked up. Yeah, and then maybe a little swirl side to side and shake out your shoulders and your hands and then we'll come down and um, have a seat. So I don't know how long that was. It was maybe seven minutes or something. All right. And now we'll do a little bit of breathing. So first notice, so I'll have my eyes um, closed through this. So I invite you to either close your eyes or just look down at the floor and then find a comfortable seat. Maybe you're sitting in a chair. Uh, maybe like me, you're sitting on a block or a meditation cushion. My knees are forward and feet are back, but you might be sitting cross-legged. That just might hurt your knees, your knee joint. So sit in a comfortable position. And then bring your fingertips to your shoulders and the elbows wide for a moment, breathe in. You wanna feel nice and broad across the collarbones. Stay here, lift your right fingertips toward the crown of your head. And then sense this triangle between the crown of your head and your shoulders. You want that nice and broad. And then from the shoulders, 
Feel that another triangle as you bring your right fingertip down to the solar plexus. So there's another triangle. And then both fingertips at the solar plexus and feel the triangle lines down to the pelvis. And there's another triangle. So the triangle is the strongest, most stable geometric um, shape. And that's kind of where we stack everything up. And then shake out your head, let the palms rest on your legs and just soften your eyes. And begin to sense your body coming into a seated shape. And then noticing the shoulders the next time you exhale, relax and release the shoulders away from your ears. Unclench your jaw. Let the tongue be easy in your mouth. Relax your throat. Soften your cheeks and your eyes. Notice if your energy of your eyes are still looking forward and out and shift the eyes to in and down. So just drop the eyes and then relaxing the forehead. We'll bring the right hand to the low belly and the left hand toward your high heart or up on the chest. And take a moment to relax the belly into your right hand. The abdominal muscles really need to be relaxed here. And then remember that we're not breathing into the belly. The diaphragm is doing the work, but we use those words as a reference because the belly is what we feel moving. And then sensing your neutral, easy breath flowing in and out of your nose. We're not working the breath, we're noticing the breath flowing in and out of the nose. And notice the ripple effect that the breath has in the body. Bringing that oxygen in, releasing carbon dioxide. Body expanding on the inhale and the body diaphragm contracting on the exhale. And then slide the left hand down so both hands are on your low belly, fingertips pointing toward the belly button. And I'll do a little guided breathing. As you breathe in through your nose, feel it come down the throat, opening the chest and breathing deeply into the belly so the belly expands. As you breathe out, slowly draw the navel in. You're breathing out your nose, breath pressing up through the chest and the throat and out the nose. And breathing in through the nose, bring the breath down the spine, way deep into the belly, the bottom of the belly. And as you breathe out, draw the navel in, breath out the nose. And we'll do that about four more times. This is a really good breath. It's called diaphragmatic breathing. Feel how deep it is. It's bringing the energy down and in. So if you feel anxiousness, this is a really good breath practice. We're digesting our life, digesting relationships, our thoughts, the news. And last breath here. Slide both hands to your legs when you're ready. Breathe in and out the nose. Maybe sigh out your mouth. Keeping the eyes closed, just notice if there's been any shift and we notice as a steady witness, we don't have expectations. We're just watching. We're watching any impact. And then we'll come into the second breath practice. So prana mudra, left hand, thumb touching the ring finger and the pinky finger, first two fingers um, lifted or extended. Rest that hand on your left leg. And then the right hand coming up toward your face. First two fingers resting between your brows and then uh, ring finger and thumb just resting up above the flare of the nostrils. We'll breathe in through both nostrils. Breathe out through both. 
Closing the left nostril, breathe in through the right nostril. You're bringing the breath up toward the fingers between the brows. And closing the right, breathing out left. Breathing in left, let the belly expand. Closing left, breathe out right. Relax your belly, breathe in right. Pause between the brows. Closing right, breathe out left. And now begin to watch the breath. Relax your belly. Watch the breath, breathing in left. Cool air rising, pausing between the brows. Breathing out right. Feel the breath warm, releasing. And stay with this three or so more rounds on your own. Inhaling one side. Closing both nostrils, pausing between the brows as long as it's delightful. And exhale out the other side. If you're feeling tense in the jaw, relax your belly more before you inhale, or maybe set the right hand down and do this with your mind. Alternate nostril breathing. No rushing. Let the body breathe one more cycle. Nowhere to go, nothing to do just the breath. And the next time you exhale either side, right hand comes down, maybe prana mudra or tips of all fingers touching the tips of your thumbs and take two breaths in and out of the nostrils. Eyes stay closed or downcast. We're shifting awareness inward. Letting go of outer sensations, tuning into inner ones. Let your awareness naturally come to the space between the brows or the heart center. And let the body lead you. And then sticking with that choice, sense again the inhale and the exhale. We're not forcing the exhale, we're letting it flow. And then stay here or invite a mantra. On your inhale, see to yourself or say the word I. On the exhale, am. Easy in breath, I. Easy out breath and nothing more, nothing less. Stay with your breath. Remind yourself you're safe. You won't be here long and you'll be better for it. If your mind gets distracted, that's normal. Come back to the breath. I am. Stay with yourself another moment. Sense the breath. I am. And gradually let the mantra soften. Sense the flow of breath. 
the spirit within, your guide, your resource, your strength, your power. And slowly slide both hands back up to heart center, tuck your chin. Keep the eyes closed, take a breath in and out. And just honor these few moments that you have chosen. Chosen to spend connecting with yourself. Connecting with the divine, the spark of the divine within. And know that when you connect with this deep sense of the ground of your being, that you're honoring, you're cherishing, and you're adoring the creation that you are and filling yourself up and tuning into the pleasant and the unpleasant, the desired and the not so desired parts of ourselves that we're creating fertile ground to better regard others with that same loving kindness, that same compassion. And then we'll bring the thumbs to, or the palms together, resting the thumbs at heart center. This posture, if you imagine people for millennia have been holding the shape for praying. I invite you to honor this light within you with your thumbs at heart center. And hold yourself between your palms with as much compassion, mercy, responsibility that you can muster. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Peace, peace, peace. And then we'll slowly lower the hands. Maybe shrug your shoulders. You might brush off your chest or your back, your arms, and then just come back into the space. Welcome yourself back. So that was all in all, literally like 20 to 23 minutes. Hmm. Interesting. Thank you. You're welcome. So it's so interesting. I, you know, I was a part of um, a, a movement called the Vineyard Movement for almost 30 years. Um, and it was, you know, born out of the Jesus Movement. It was kind of a charismatic, you know, wing of the evangelical world. But John Wimber was one of my mentors. And we, you know, we laid hands on people for everything, right? <laughs> healing, emotional healing, any kind of, it just, just when we cared and prayed for people, we would ask permission to lay hands on people. And John had taught this thing he called the five-step model, which was a way to help people when they're praying for people, not just to launch into counseling or uh, any, but to actually to interview the person, step one, listen, and then you're, and he taught to listen to the spirit it, that sort of that intuitive listening to the spirit and listening to the person at the same time. And then, and then you, you know, you begin the prayer process, but then as you're praying for somebody, we would always after, you know, we might pray for a little while, invite the spirit, we would pause and ask him if they felt anything. And he was really big on helping people tune into, uh, feelings in the body that might be occurring when we prayed for people. It could be heat, could be, uh, you know, and what was interesting was when I was a teenager and felt called to be a pastor, I would have these tingles wash down my neck and back and spine, sometimes spill over into my arms. It was just like a tingly rush of electricity or whatever, you know, energy. And that happened a lot, either when I was getting prayed for or when people prayed for me. But what's interesting is as I've gotten into like today, like when we just did this, when I stood, I had that same wash of electricity, just washed down my neck and back and spine. And then when we got in the seating position, it happened again. It, it washed over real intense, but then it would subside. And then it happened a couple of other times as we concluded that sitting practice. 
it's, it's just been interesting to me to, uh, you know, we always called it the spirit, but, um, it, you know, um, it's so interesting how, how that, and it's, it's such a good warm feel. It's always, I always felt like it was like God loving me or something like that, you know, I, or the spirit, you know, touching me or what, you know, we had all these different, um, language around that, but, but it happens the same way I find. So it's very interesting when you tune into your breath and your body and, and then these physical well, sensations. Way of, um, I love that that happened to you um, because I think we've beheaded the spirit. You know, we're so in our minds and we're so theologically inclined or sometimes even in a meditation practice, it's so, um, specified to what you're supposed to do like a zen meditation you know it's rigid and eventually you might settle into it um, but if we could support the whole person holistic process and invite the body into it and invite the breath into it invite our whole self check nothing out at the door then what i think we're doing is it's very theological for me but we're aligning with God within mm. and that that is really where um, it always makes me feel emotional because it is such a spiritual process. And even in our yoga, um, if it's just athletic yoga, again, fine and dandy, but oftentimes we're really leaving out this sense of aliveness and that aliveness is our humanity connected, you know, we're, what do we, people say we're physical beings embodying a spirit or something like that. So this allows a person to feel and sense that God is with us in whatever form that you're, you know, understanding God to be, um, that we are, um, when we're aligned with God, I think that that spirit is enlivened and it's not hokey pokey. Um, it's not magic. There is a science behind it. Yoga is a science and an art as is meditation. And so why wouldn't we want people to tap into that felt sense mm -hmm. of inner connection? Mm -hmm. And so it's that energy and, you know, it's called Kundalini energy, not to scare anybody, but that's what that is. And I don't think it's any different than what I felt when I was in like singing together, you know, in a church community, right. when you feel alive, I can feel that same thing in Kirtan. If I'm chanting Sanskrit, right. um, when it's aligned that way. And the difference is, is that I am not seeking this so that I can, um, change another person. I'm finding freedom in it. And my hope is that I can support another to help them find their freedom and their path. And their path is going to be different than my path. But when we're aligned, that we are indeed um, what like what serves me serves all of humanity. I am not seeking to build my own power aside from being empowered to live my authentic, whole, um, vibrant, beautiful life in service. Mm. And I'm not seeking for you to be told for me to tell you what the spirit is telling you. I'm seeking for that to be enlivened in you. And I know it's enlivened unless you start seeking your own good and your own power. And then that is not aligned, you know, with the spirit. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because I think a lot of people use that like slain in the spirit and all of those kinds of verbiage to then speak on behalf of God and tell other people what to do and mm -hmm. how they should be living. And so I want to really emphasize the difference here. Mm -hmm. you know, does that all make sense? Yes, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. You're inviting people to, um, yeah, it, to experience their bodies and, and, uh, and connect with what connects all of us. I mean, it, it is a human thing, right. That in, in connection, I think when we're connecting with, I like to define spirituality. I mean, I know there's a ton of definitions but for me it's connection with self others and something greater it's a real simple definition for me but you know when i talk about spirituality adventures that's what i'm talking about is that connection or that belongingness to self others 
and something greater. And do you know what the definition of yoga is? I don't. It's to unify. Oh, okay. So we're unifying and then we start the whole practice. We I led you through, there's layers and they're called koshas. And we start with the, but they're all interconnected. You know, like we just talk about them like an onion, but of course they're all one thing. Um, but it's the physical body, the mental body, the pranic body, or um, the energy body, the wisdom body, um, and then the bliss body. And the bliss body is a rare occurrence, but it definitely happens. And and we can have that like deep, um, deep joy, you know, just this, you know, whatever makes you just feel that bliss or that sense of ease and whatnot. And so we're just, we're just using all of those layers, tuning into all of those through connection so that we can better connect with ourselves, better connect with others, better connect with the divine and all. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, same, same. Yeah. I was just in a, a centering prayer group. I do it every Tuesday morning early. And uh, it's kind of a, it's a group of friends that are are like Richard Rohr. And we, we, we do a centering prayer practice and we read a, little short portions of his little book, just this. I love that book. I have it on my shelf. Yeah. And this morning's reading was, you know, about union versus some kind of weird perfection that satisfies the small ego. Mm -hmm. but union is the big thing, not correct doctrine, not, you know, perfection mm -hmm. of some weird sort that we think we've achieved, but union, you know, and how can we achieve that union? I don't even like the word achieve. Um, how can we like work toward that experience that if we've cut our body out of it, mm. you know, like, are you kidding me? This Jesus was embodied, mm -hmm. you know? So yeah. it's, it's kind of, all of this is a very spiritual practice for me. Um, and I love teaching it. I love sharing it. Um, I think it helps people who have been really harmed by religious or religion or, um, you know, churches or whatever it There's is. Trauma, all kinds. Yeah. yeah, definitely. To be able to tap back into that without the dogma. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not like, like everything goes. I mean, there's, you know, non-stealing and non-harming and, you know, truthfulness, like all of those tenets of yoga are like the 10 commandments only not not moralistic where you're going to go to hell mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. it's like you're going to be more connected and more settled and more centered if you're living this life mm -hmm. or you can do all those things and then you know see the suffering that comes yeah yeah well, I need to skedaddle. I know you do. Thank you so much. Thanks everybody for tuning in to Spirituality Adventures and uh yeah, we will we will talk to you next time and I I I know our paths will cross again. I trust that they will. So, anyway, thank I'm really you. excited to hear what happens with this um yoga at your church. So, oh. keep us posted and uh, I'm pulling together a good team, I think. So, yeah. Fun okay, stuff. thank you, Fred. Thank you. Take Peace. care. Take care. Bye. This concludes today's episode. Thanks for tuning in and listening. Remember, if you're watching on YouTube, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Remember to like, share, or subscribe to the social media platform that you're using. And then go to our website, spiritualityadventures.com, and make a one-time donation. Or you can subscribe monthly and receive our special bonus content. Thanks so much.